Dear filmmakers, dear press representatives, on site and online, as many of you are connected online today. I am Renate Ranzi from IDM and I'm very glad to welcome you to the launch of MASO, the new training program for short films developed by IDM Film Commission, together with Bolzano Film Festival and several other partners that in part are here with us today. Short film continues to be the, the most important source of renewal in the film industry. It's the experimental field in which future film languages are developed. With that being said, I would like to start this morning with a quote from Werner Herzog. Because I'm autodidact, short film was for me what film school is for young directors today. And now I want to give the word to Vera Leonardelli, director of IDM Business Development. Vera, thank you so much for being with us here today. Well, thank you very much to you all. So, dear partners and colleagues, uh, let me welcome you to this official launch of MASO. So, in the last decades, uh, for the local government, for IDM Südtirol, it has always been a major objective to develop and to strengthen the South Tyrolean film location. And MASO is an important step, another important step towards this goal. This international program aims to develop, to produce and to distribute f short films. And the training program will create new opportunities for talents. Short films are indeed established an established format to shine a light on talents, on emerging talents, and they give them the chance to show their skills and to attract the attention of the industry. On one hand, MASO is meant to provide directors with support and guidance to facilitate creative exchange and to generate important connections for the future. On the other hand, it is a great opportunity to give more internationalization, not only for South Tyrolean film industry. Last but not least, MASO will be a great chance to address themes of social sustainability, which is a topic that is very key for IDM. The strong link to Bolzano Film Festival Bozen and its artistic director Vicenzo Bugno was fundamental for IDM to start a collaboration that ended up in this program, MASO. But now I really want to thank all the partners for the precious collaboration which has made this project possible. Special thanks go to the representatives of the Cultural Department of the Autonomous Province of Bolzano, Barbara Weiss, Luca Bizzarri and Jürgen Rungaldier and to the Dean of Zelig School of Documentary, Television and New Media, Heidi Gronauer, and to Terja Nimak, CEO of the North Norsk Film Center, one of MASO international partners that today we are happy that you are here with us, and of course to the Free University of Bolzano, especially Prof Professor Roberto Farnetti. And a special appreciation goes to the IDM team of Film Commission for their excellent work, the excellent work they have done in developing this collaboration. So finally, I'd like to wish you all a great short film day and an interesting and stimulating film festival. And I can't wait to see the produced short films and short film series that will come out of this program. Thank you very much for that. Thank you so much, Vera, for your words and uh, for always supporting us in the development of South Tyrol as a film location. That's very important. Now I would like uh, to give the word to the one who gave shape to the idea of MASO. Please welcome on stage Artistic Director of Bolzano Film Festival, Vincenzo Pugno. Thank you very much. So uh, I don't want to talk um, until um, midday now, but uh, I think uh, first of all I would like to say that uh, I'm impressed and delighted. It means delighted, impressed by our uh, cooperation and uh, uh, collaboration with the EDM, the Film Commission, because uh, we started talking uh, 
just a month ago, more or less, I would say, in order to, to, to develop some common ideas and, and, and projects. And so uh, we started discussing with Birgit and also Luigi, so the president of the film club, in order to find the right way to develop a project together. And uh, it was not only about the right way, but it was about uh, finding something which really could make sense. And uh, well, uh, we started talking about supporting shorts, uh, the film industry, if you talk about shorts, if you talk about uh, training, uh, production, and uh, uh, last but not least, uh, also uh, visibility. And I think uh, Maso definitely make sense because uh, the uh, short universe is a sh um, universe with a strong identity and incredible potential and is a piece of art which is also very independent for the world of the uh, long feature films. So uh, if you talk about uh, shorts, you can really enjoy freedom, I think, if you talk about it in artistic terms. Um, I would like, first of all, uh, to say thank you to Birgit uh, and uh, her team because uh, well, we, we, we started doing things extremely quickly. So in Italian there is a um, so-called proverbio, uh, which is tra il dire e il fare c'è di mezzo il mare. So uh, I, I don't know really the exact tra uh, translation, but you could see it could be between doing, saying and doing, there is half of the sea, something like that. So, and EDM and Birgit are exactly the contrary. So, between saying and doing, there is no sea. It works. We did it. <laughs> And I think uh, beside the extremely important uh, artistic value of this initiative, I would also say that um, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, a great, it's a great opportunity for the EDM and also for South Tyrol, because I think uh, South Tyrol is an extremely, extremely important uh, example if you talk about being very local, but being also extremely international. And particularly if you talk about regions, uh, yeah, uh, and borders and minorities and everything, I think this is crucial to be very, very international. And uh, uh, well, this project, Maso, definitely confirms that this is possible. And I would like also to thank you, uh, Birgit and her team, because they did an incredible job also putting together uh, uh, many international partners. And, uh, well, thank you very much, Birgit. Thank you very much to EDM. And thank you very much to everybody attending this uh, introduction today. Thank you also, Vincenzo, for the collaboration in the program, because as Vera said before, it was fundamental for the development of MASO. For years, IDM Film Commission developed a strong collaboration with the three cultural departments of Autonomous Province of Bolzano, with the aim to invest in the development of local film talents. Now I want to welcome Barbara Weiss, Director of the Office of Film and Media, and Luca Vizzari, Director of the Lifelong Learning Libraries and Audiovisual Office, to come on stage. Many thanks goes also to Jürgen Rungalier of the Office of Learning, Culture and Youth, who could not be here with us today. Yeah, uh, warm welcome also from the public side. <laughs> and yeah, we started the collaboration uh, also last year uh, with the uh, Torino Short Film Festival in Cilandro. And um, yeah, we had uh, in this um, event also a very good outcome, a very precious outcome because one of uh, the local uh, famous uh, filmmakers, Ronny Trocker, was invited to Dresden to uh, represent South Tyrol in the short film, uh, yeah, s short film series. Uh, and therefore, uh, yeah, we said we have to continue this collaboration because short film, like Vincenzo said, is a very um, important uh, part of, uh, yeah, also of our topic uh, because the creative experience 
experience uh, of uh, filmmakers in in this area is um, not only development uh, but uh, has um, yeah f for all of filmmakers uh, is a very important part and step and therefore we are interested uh, to support to collaborate also with Maza and when Birgit said to us okay uh, are you part again of this project we said yes Luca yeah have you to <laughs> I do <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much. Also, from my side, we are working as an entire group. I would say that we are taking decisions and working uh, together. The same enthusiasm on my side for this experience. Uh, a wonderful experience has been the last year, the TSFM in Cilandro Schlanders, and we could touch that there is a very big enthusiasm in the field of cinema so that we have to say uh, that nowadays in South Tyrol we are living something really special in the field of cinema and of course the public body couldn't be in uh, and working together with the other uh, subjects and protagonists of this big uh, field and as Barbara said it's a question of the cultural industry working which is developing the territory so i'm very happy and i think we are very happy to be here with the main uh, protagonist of this uh, development uh, stream which is the uh, the cinema and uh, i like very much the logo of mazo and we can say that uh, we built a house and now we are all inside this house and so we are very happy to be uh, you know, part of this stream and to see how we'll work in the future. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you so much, Barbara and Luca. And of course, nice greetings to Jörn Grungalier also. Now, um, I think it's the moment to find out more about Maso. I want to welcome Birgit Oberkofler, head of IDM Film Commission, and Vincenzo Pugno to come on stage. Birgit, what is MASO and who is the program aimed at? Set in very few words. <laughs> so set in very few words. So hello also from my side. Good morning to everybody. It's nice to be here with you. Uh, set also set in very few words. It's a program for the development, financing, production and distribution of shorts. Uh, yes, that's MASO. <laughs> Maso, um, we already hear about, is a program with 13 international partners. You can see them on the screen right now. How does the collaboration with the local and international partners look like? Uh, first of all, I'm also very happy that so many uh, partners locally but also internationally jumped on the program. So uh, the aim was uh, to build and create something together. Also maybe things we have already done as uh, regional funding bodies in the past. But uh, now we really wanted to do something together and we also felt the need to be more inclusive towards the talents. So this is also the aim of the program. We are not there but uh, we we are very motivated to take little steps, many little steps, to, to go somewhere together. Thank you. Vincenzo, during one of the first meetings in your new role as Statistic Director of Bolzano Film Festival Bolzano with IDM Film Commission, you had the idea of a training initiative named NASO. A long time passed by, I think it was one year, more or less. Not even, and many hours of work were necessary, but here we are. Are you happy with what you created together? Uh, as I said at the beginning of this uh, uh, conversation or uh, presentation, I'm definitely more than happy. I said I'm delighted. And uh, I think it's also what we are doing uh, is definitely uh, cl very close to uh, what, what was uh, my idea of this territory and the South Tyrol, because when I started this activity, I, I asked myself, so uh, how to deal with this? Meaning, uh, I think um, 
the, the goal of an artistic director or of a cultural institution should be, first of all, trying to understand wh where I'm I. So, uh, meaning what are the other cultural institu institutions working on this field, on this territory. And, uh, well, uh, when I arrived, uh, not the first time, but when I arrived, I started understanding that uh, um, uh, South Tyrol definitely, if we talk about cinema, it's not only about uh, uh, the film festival, but it's about uh, uh, an extremely interesting um, uh, location, as in German standort. If you talk about uh, uh, cooperation and uh, uh, possibilities, potential uh, in the film of the film industry, and uh, because uh, there is a festival, there is a great uh, uh, film school. There is the EDM, there is the university, so I think uh, there is an enormous potential. And so uh, I think Maso is one of the first steps uh, of this, um, well, future uh, attitude, present and future attitude. And I think, uh, I'm, you ask myself if I'm happy. Yeah, definitely, yes. What I'm saying confirms what uh, my, my state of mind and my, 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 my feelings, yes. Thank you. Um, let me quote an article of March 2024 of the World Economic Forum. Only 17 of nominees at the Oscars since 1929 have been women. And less than 2% of nominees were women of color, a new research shows. A third study reframing the picture, an international comparative assessment of gender equity policies in the short film sector, in the film sector, looked at the film industries in the UK, Canada and Germany. It found out at the current rate of progress, gender equity, where women occupy 50% of key creative position, will only be achieved in 2215 in Canada, 2085 in UK and 2041 in Germany. Regarding Italy, films by female directors comprised just 13 of the total films produced in Italy in both 2019 and 2020, according to data released by Cinecita, Italian's largest production studio. Birgit, you already talked about, but let us have a little more insight about Maso wants to encourage projects that take disability, ethnicity, gender, and inclusiveness uh, into account. And yeah, what are, how exactly do we integrate it? So um, we have already started this uh, towards a more gender balanced, uh, to, towards more gender balanced pro projects within the fund, uh, the IDM Film Fund, a few years ago, and then we decided we we would like to go more into inclusion and diversity, and not only gender balancing, even though, as we have heard, it's still a topic. And that's why it's very important also for Maso. As I said before, it was uh, within the concept of the program since the beginning. And since uh, we are not the experts, we uh, found an association which is called uh, Gewächshaus in Vienna. It's an association of BIPOC filmmakers. Uh, Anouk Schad, she wanted to be here, so we had organized everything for her. So even the child curve, child care for her kid and everything was prepared but then she got ill unfortunately and so she's more sad than we I think to, that she cannot be here with us today but uh, she uh, Gewächshaus is going to be our partner they are doing very uh, good things in Austria already for the German speaking uh, area they are funded by the National uh, Film Institute of o Austria and they are going they already helped us with the call for projects they are going to help us for the selection of the project and they are going to give uh, consultancies to every single project or a more diverse script so these are the next steps we are doing in we are doing in this uh, in this field and as i have said before there are, i'm sure there are many others because uh, we are not there but we are trying to get somewhere <laughs> Vincenzo, you already talked about, but can you let us uh, know a little bit more about how the region will benefit of initiating and running such an international training program? This region. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, uh, well, it's about, uh, uh, I mean, the, the fact that, for example, the, the second workshop, 
will take will take place uh, in 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 Bolzano Bozen uh, during the next festival is definitely amazing. I think it's the very important step because it's not about uh, the the fact that, that we are working together. We we will work together also with other institutions in the region. It's also about the fact that thanks to these um, new opportunities, uh, the, the film industry of the region will grow some, somehow. And so it was, a, I think, uh, very pragmatically speaking, as we talk about communication, this is also, also an extremely important tool. Um, I would like to uh, add something uh, regarding um, um, inclusion, gender polit policies, and, and, and everything. I think... Um, uh, we definitely shouldn't forget that, and the fact that uh, this aspect is a part uh, uh, of the program is key. Um, otherwise, I think I'm very optimistic uh, regarding all these aspects, because uh, if you, we considering the, uh, uh, the general state uh, of the film industry and um, of the production universe worldwide, something is happening also in, in many regions uh, uh, outside of Europe. And I think the fact that uh, in our, uh, in the program of, of the festival, there are so many uh, uh, films made by female directors confirms this, this aspect. So uh, otherwise, it's definitely important that, that we work on this field. And uh, well, let's, let's wait and see. Uh, Birgit, now we are very curious to see how Maso looks like. Let's have a look at the animated visual. <laughs> visual. Okay, that was the visual of Maso. Um, Birgit, um, why did you decide to create a visual identity from scratch for this program? Yeah, um, so the idea was to put all the parts on the same level. So it was very because if it's uh, if it would have been uh, only with the IDM logo or with the festival logo, then I mean it would not have been so, so um, democratic as it is right now, and uh, also because we really wanted to reach out to a new target, in part to a new target, not only to a new, but in part to a new target. And so it had to meet also the, the target group. And then the third thing was also, as already uh, Luca said so nicely, uh, it's uh, uh, the house. The house, Maso, is a house. And uh, then the idea came to create a safe space uh, for um, creativity, uh, for filmmaking, and that's it. And I'm also very happy that all the partners they liked it a lot <laughs> this is very nice may i say something no. about this point uh, I, I i do like first of all i do like the the name mazo uh, <laughs> because it was a very important <laughs> port we, we discussed a lot about this name uh, what about the meaning of mazo uh, in the region outside the region internationally uh, what does it mean and i think uh, uh, I like it a lot because uh, maybe it sounds now a little bit too um, Protestant or something like that, but Maso is about working because uh, a Maso, Maso is an art working space and uh, it means uh, um, I think one of the goals should be also trying our best in order to create a great atmosphere. Uh, which is definitely important in, in, in this kind of initiative. So everybody should feel uh, home and it's about working together with all the participants in a very productive but very human way. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's, uh, it's a great name and last but not least is also a name which somehow really represents, uh, I think, the idea of the film industry of, of the region but also of the festival. Again, the more local, the more international because it's a very local name. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Birgit and Vincenzo, that you gave us an insight about the development of the program. And now I would like to Thank welcome... You Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> and now we are curious to go even more in detail and to have a look at the call for projects. In this regard, I would like to invite Enrico Vanucci to come on stage. 
Enrico. He is the artistic head of Maso. <coughs> Sorry. He is a member of the selection committee of Pari di Domani at the Locarno Film Festival and also of the selection, co selection committee of Lim Less is More. He has worked in several film festivals and markets in 2010 and collaborated with the Venice Film Festival and the Talent Short Film mar Market, which he co-founded in 2016. He also co-founded Varicolor, a holistic short film agency in 2018, Talking Shorts, an online magazine dedicated to short films in 2020, and in 2022, the Talents Generator Factory, a company dedicated to the development of new audiovisual products from both emerging and established professionals. In 2021, he became a member of European Film Academy. Who, if not you, could be the head of Maso? <laughs> Thank you, Enrico, and welcome at Bolzano. Thank you. Thank you, Renate. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm old, I guess, uh, after all this uh, <laughs> list. So, uh, my name is Enrico Vannucci. I'm very happy to be here. Um, actually, I'm also very excited to present Maso to you. I'm very grateful to IDM, uh, Birgit, and all the team, uh, Vincenzo as well, uh, for you know picking me for uh, being the artistic director of the program. Um, so, next slide, please. Let's dive into it. So, what it is? Um, as we well briefly said, uh, it's a program aimed to develop short films from the very first step from the idea until the completion so from just a sparkle to the final film seen in cinemas and during festivals or maybe even online uh, on tv next so uh we aimed at um Mas is dedicated to uh, a team or several teams um composed by a director slash screenwriter and a producer who are backed by um, a production company um, and well two participants can participate into the program uh, for each team um, the, the films are uh, the film genre let's say are pretty open uh, we accept all um, all genres, so everybody who has a project or an idea is well is is really um, uh, invited to to send. Um, also, the applicants with little experience are encouraged to send uh, their projects because uh, we think that uh, their development will 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 help them no matter how. How much experience they have, we only they only need a, a, a production company attached. Um, and also, uh, we accept uh, participants that come from all over the world, so it's pretty open. Of course, as you've seen, uh, there are several collaborations uh, with with several partners, so we will have some fixed, let's say, um, spots. Uh, but there are also uh, spots available for from for filmmakers and producers from all over the world. Next, please. How is structured? So this is interesting. So Mazo is structured into five points, let's say, or five, yeah, moments. Um, the first one is the selection pro process, which starts um, basically today with the open call. Uh, then we have the short film development, the short film pre-production, the short film production, and the short film promotion. Next, let's go into it. So the phase one is the selection process. As I said, the application period starts today and hands on June the 30th. We will take one month to, to read the projects and to, to pick the, the eight uh, projects that are gonna be selected. And so that will happen in July. And uh, by early August, we should be able to give uh, feedback to everyone. Um, the evaluation uh, will be made by me plus uh, a, 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 a jury, uh, let's say a, a, selection, a selection committee of uh, four other people. And the evaluation will be based on the artistic value and the feasibility of the films, meaning that we want to pick projects that are uh, that are going to be made, so uh, that we are 
sure that the film it won't, won't only just be on paper, but will become a proper film and be screened uh, eventually. Um, and of course, as, as it has been said before, uh, diversity and inclusiveness are encouraged, so we encourage all the people who have a project talking about uh, underrepresented community to communities, sorry, to, to submit their, their projects and their ideas to, to Marcel. Uh, next one, please. Thank you so much. Uh, so, the short film development. Um, after we we uh, we will make the selection, of course, the, the the selected project will be notified, and everybody is invited to to come to Norway um, in end of November. I'm pretty happy about that. It's going to be amazing, uh, where we will have the first workshop of the program. Uh, the first wor workshop of the program will be uh, focused on creating uh, the idea for for the film, meaning we will work uh, in a collaborative way, uh, meaning that uh, all the, all the uh, teams will work, of course, on their project, but also on the project of the other teams in order to share ideas, in order to collaborate, in order to, to share experiences. Uh, the workshop is five days, it's going to be intensive, um, we will be confined, I would say, into, um, into wilderness, almost. Um, but, but it would be helpful for the projects to be developed. And, and at the end of the five days, through a series of games, or exercises, or talks, infinite talks, I guess, um, we will have, uh, each project will have uh, a very strong idea um, to where to start writing the script of the film. Um, the script writing phase goes on then for three, four months, depending on, on the needs of the projects. It's going to be done by the teams themselves that will have consulting with the tutors. Oh, I forgot to say that, of course, the first workshop will be um, um, uh, tutored by two people. Uh, uh, one is Yulia Rugina, who she is a, um, um, a director from from Romania, and the other one I can't reveal at the moment, but we will be revealed soon. Um, and the, the tutors will uh, have online meetings with the teams uh, in order to uh, develop the script into this uh, lapse of time. And um, moreover, the teams will also meet with uh, their sponsors at that time, uh, discussing already a little bit about financing for the films. And uh, we will also have uh, meetings uh, regarding uh, the inclusiveness and, uh, of their films. So uh, this will end more or less in March uh, or by the early April next year. Next. Uh, uh, no, uh, go back. Phase three, I guess. No, uh, okay, no, yeah, three. Okay, here we, here we are. So um, this is the short film pre-production. So the pre-production, more or less, will start in uh, April next year uh, with uh, a second workshop that's gonna be held here in, in Bolzano Bozen, and the workshop will be mostly focused on uh, the strategies for the production of, um, of the films. Um, the, um, the workshop probably will be held like the week before the festival, but the dates are not still, I mean, still to be decided. Um, because during, during the festival, during the industry days, will be a pitch uh, where the project uh, that at that time will be, uh, will have a proper script that's ready to be, uh, to, 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 to be uh, developed uh, into production and we'll start having this uh, uh, pre-production work on, on the project. We'll, we will, they will um, um, pitch the, the project to uh, um, an audience of um, film um, professionals in order to find other collaborations for, for, from, from now on for the projects. Um, again, the, the, the workshop will be 
five days, we will have different tutors, more focused on uh, the, the production and, and, and promotion of, of the films. And, uh, but it will be like a continuous work for, for the participants, of course. Um, and after the, the Bold Zano Bold Zano Film Fest, uh, the, the actual pre-production will, will start for uh, the teams. Uh, next, please. Uh, the phase four is the short film production. So meaning that the, the teams will go into uh, the production and then post-production of their films. Um, in this phase, let's say, they will have more freedom uh, in a way where, um, of, of course, they will be in contact with us uh, for support, but they will free to apply what they learned during their uh, workshops uh, on-site and online. Um, uh, in practice, to make, make them pra make it in practice. So apply for funding, looking for other funding, looking for collaborations, uh, get into pre-production, pre get into production, and then start a way to find a way to post-produce the films. Um, and also very important in this phase, it would be the implementation of a green filmmaking protocol that we will that will be taught uh, during the, the, the workshop in Bolzano uh, in April 2025. Next, please. And then we we reach to the final phase of of Mazo. Um, it's the short film promotion. Um, it's when the films would be made. Uh, of course, this phase can you know can blend also with phase four, of course, in terms of plans to where to distribute the films. Uh, of course, the teams are totally, uh, uh, the, the, let's say, the, um, the distribution strategy is up to them. Um, it's uh, because of the rights of the films, it, it, it's there. It's, it's, it's not owned by Mazo, but it's, by, it's owned by the producers and the filmmakers, of course. Um, and they can make the decisions regarding the distribution of the film, which means that they can do that themselves or they can work with distributors. And again, we will, of course, uh, advise them how to better do it. Um, um, important things for us is that the Bolzano Film Festival Bozen is, is going to be part of the festival distribution strategy for for the project. So you will see the project here in Bolzano. Um, and also it's very important for us that there are going to be inclusions of Mazo references in, in, in the films, uh, probably at the beginning or at the end of the films. Um, and, and then that's it uh, for the phases. Next, please. So when it's scheduled, um, as I said before, the first workshop is uh, is November 26th to December 3rd, 2024. Um, the script writing phase will run from December to March, more or less, and the production development workshop would be here in Bodes in, in, in April 2025. And then the post-production phase runs from April 2025, so one year time on. The expected completion date is end of 2025. But of course, we know that Filmmaker is not so smooth sometimes. So of course, uh, there is not a strict deadline. Uh, the project, uh, each project will be discussed with us and we will find the best way for them to complete the film because this is what is important for us, that the films are gonna be made and be seen. Um, so some projects might be ready by the end of 2025, others might be ready in 2026. But we will see that uh, project by project. Next, please. So where is it located? As I said, various locations, uh, including Norway and here in Bolzano. I'm not going to talk about Norway because next we will hear more about that. And, uh, and then, of course, online meetings. Next. Which language? Uh, English. It's pretty easy. <laughs> it's an international program, so English is going to be the uh, common language. Um, 
it's all the documents are required to be sent in English and uh, and also the workshops and the meetings will be in English um, of course the project can be developed in any language um, the, the, the participants will have to translate of course the, the script but uh, the work in um, language is definitely English next how to apply? So the applications are online. Um, it's uh, in, in the application. It's pretty simple. I mean, like it's not many questions. Um, we have mandatory information about the creative team. We want to know who uh, the, um, the filmmakers are, the producers are, what I've done in before, uh, if I've done something. Um, we want to know a little bit more about the production company who is behind. Uh, the, 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 the project and we want of course know about the project uh, regarding the project as I said ideas are fine we don't need a full script at the moment I mean it's something that we will come to that altogether so um, of course projects that are already being written once can be sent uh, but we are want also to find uh, people who are willing to change or willing to develop more their ideas so they are open to collaboration first and to develop further their ideas um, the applications again is open from today until the june the 30th next I, how much it cost so uh, it costs 5,000 euros but um, uh, there are participation uh, participation fees and accommodation can be covered uh, for selected projects by the partners each partner has a different way of covering these fees so everything is written in in the call for call for uh, for projects in the annex one so please also read that very carefully um, because there are very nice opportunities for filmmakers to apply to these grants next more questions of course you can write to film at edm minus or hyphen or the know in English is it sudirol.com. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Enrico. There will be um, the moment in some minutes where there is a QA, so please feel free to uh, remember all your questions for just in a few minutes. Right now, I would like to um, welcome Terje and Heidi Gronauer. Because as we could see from the presentation of Enrico, the two workshops will be structured. Um, one will be in, in uh, Norway in November in 2024. And the other one will be in, uh, in Bolzano during or before we hear Bolzano Film Festival, Bozen. And I really think this is also a nice benefit because we had the question before for Vincenzo, how the region can benefit uh, from the collaboration. And I really think this, this is also a nice benefit because I don't want to, to um, take the words of Heidi because you will, we will say it also before, uh, later. But uh, the second workshop will be done in Zelig Film School. And so I think this is a very nice uh, way to match the filmmakers of Maso together, together with Zelig Film Schools. And now I want to welcome on stage uh, Terje and André Niemack, CEO of um, Nord North Film Center. Terje is one of our international partners of MASO and he will present us the North Norwegian Film Center. Thank you. Hello, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Um, um, it's good to be part of a new short film initiative and especially one with so many international participants. Uh, we have plenty of national short film initiatives, but one with this added layer of the international uh, networking and co-production is uh, it's really nice. So uh, thank you for the initiative, IDM. Um, as a uh, former talent developer, I've worked with talent development in film for over 10 years. I'm really interested in, interested in the, the process 
as much as the result. And I'm uh, sure that Enrico and the guys are on top of that. So I'm looking forward to the program. Um, in Norway, you can see that uh, the circle area, that's my area, so it's half the country uh, geographically, and it's one-tenth of the population. So it's uh, scarcely populated. It's the Arctic wilderness, uh, which is uh, what attracts a lot of international co-productions. Uh, it's a geopolitical pressure zone. It's an environmental pressure zone. We have the indigenous people and a lot of other <laughs> stuff going on. Um, so uh, in our um, area, we are uh, sort of five branches working together. Uh, we have the Film Fund, uh, Film Fund Nord. They mainly work with investments, uh, top financing of higher budget productions, long format series. Um, you have a film commission that provides services with, you know, locations, getting into, um, you know, permissions and whatever you need in order to film in our region. And then you have uh, an institution called Tvibit. Uh, they're working only with talent development uh, across many uh, areas. Uh, among them, film and creative technology. They do. They have a virtual production studios, uh, gaming and film, and they provide equipment for uh, young talents up to the age of 35 and some financing. For this project, um, it's mainly film camp, which on the map is this Overbygd. It's two hours from. Uh, town of Tromsø, in the wilderness, as Rico <laughs> said. Uh, it's a former uh, army camp that has been transferred into a film studio and production facility. Um, they provide location services as well and some financing. Uh, and it's a great place to be for a workshop. There's no distractions at all. Uh, uh, and then it's the North Norwegian Film Center sort of arching this. Uh, we give grants. We do not invest. We give grants. Uh, we run talent development schemes together with other people or institutions. And we support documentaries and short formats. Uh, the center has, before my time, had a long collaboration with Selig. And I'm happy to continue with <laughs> collaboration to this one. Um, for co-productions, uh, you would need to work with a local uh, filmmaker or production company in order to get funds from us. So I do hope that through this initiative we can get some connections through our local filmmakers and the other way around. Um, I'm going to leave you with, I could stand it for hours, but I'm going to leave you with a, with a short film uh, that sort of introduces my reach into you guys. Thank you.
Thank you, Terry, for your presentation. And I'm quite sure that seeing those images of Norway, the first workshop of Maso will be very inspiring. Now let's talk about the second workshop of Maso, which will be at Zelig Film School, Zelig School for Documentary, Television and New Media at Bolzano. A warm welcome to the head of Zelig, Heidi Gronauer. Yes, hello. I'm really happy to present here Zelig. Zelig has a long, is the film school of South Tyrol and has quite a long history. It has been founded actually by film passionate people here from South Tyrol, also by the film club, for example, and the Cine Forum, and by professionals. There was a high demand of work power, professionals who know how to shoot and to edit. And uh, they founded this, uh, this school, which attracted and attracts still students from many parts of the world. It is an international school and people are coming from here and also from outside. And that actually contributed highly to the local film industry. As many of the students of Zelig stayed here in South Tyrol, started to found production companies, started to work actively here internationally with the international audiovisual market. So it is part of the ecosystem actually of this region. And one can study actually how training can contribute to the development of an industry, of a local industry. Um, Zelig is a little bit special because it is a three language school. It's an international, it's an intercultural project. So students at our school learn in these three languages and they have to learn them. And that means also to live practically, lively, and in the film real realization, uh, the diversity and makes them actually good prepared for the international practical market. We invite trainers. Uh, we don't have fixed trainers at our school, but we invite professionals for one or more weeks to come here. They are all active prof professionals, so they bring actually the real audiovisual market in its transformation directly to our school. And this is very important also for the professionalization of the people who are coming to our school. They also represent many different film languages which means that our students actually get contact with the variety and diversity of film cultures and film languages. And also this makes them more prepared to work on an international, or on an international level. Um, yeah, inside of the training, of course, it's a very practical training. And uh, we try to realize all exercise films in a very professional way. So also our students, they pitch and they have to confront themselves with the international market. And we also dedicate a lot of energy to the distribution of the films and they go to international festivals like ITFA, Hot Dogs, really around the world and win also prizes. And this is some kind also a visit card for our students uh, to get into the international world of audiovisual industry. And what for us is very important, having the trainers who are sharing their experience, but also their secrets, um, and seeing in our students their future collaborators, makes this education really that we train the professionals of tomorrow able to face this radically changing audiovisual market uh, actively. And this is very important. Um, I brought a little trailer <laughs> so you can do a little look at the film school, at training moments and also um, some images of our graduation films.
Yes, um, Zilik um, has a very diversified uh, training scheme. We have the three years uh, film education, which is dedicated to documentary film. We also have a European training program, which is called ESODOC, which is financed by the European Union, which is for professionals, and where we try to develop um, projects, not try to find the right format for the audience you want to reach. In this sense, opens up the professionals to think in diverse formats. Also, we are projects we did, short films, series. So um, this is on the European level for professionals and business course we have been many times to the North North Film Center in Norway because there we always team up with international institutions also to get to know the market, the local markets of that regions. And then we have short courses. And these short courses we develop mostly here locally, also with the local film fund, which is orientated towards professions that are needed here locally. Um, the scheme was called Movie It in the area of production, of costume, of scenography. Anyway, all these areas which are needed. And um, yes, and we are very happy to be part of MASO, as we also think that short films is a very important format and a place for experimentation. And that is, makes it so interesting to be part of this project. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Heidi, and I'm really sure that the matchmaking, as I said already before, with the MASO um, film professionals and Zelig film students will lead to a fruitful collaboration. Now it's uh, 11 sharp, so thank you all for respecting <laughs> our timing. It's the time uh, for you to ask questions. Um, if there is questions uh, online, my colleague will send them to me on the phone and I, I'm going to read them. So just feel free to address all the questions you have. I'm going to have a look. Yeah, I have a question um, regarding um, the application process. Do I is it enough to just have an idea, or do I need a synopsis, a treatment, uh, a whole script, and um, can I apply on my own, or is it necessary to be a team? Enrico, thank you so much. Hello, um, I come back. So thank you for for your question. Um, yeah, um, you will need uh, a very short uh, treatment, uh, but it's not that long. Uh, uh, I, I think it's max 1,500 characters, so very, very brief. Uh, so when I, before I said idea, I really mean it. Uh, you don't need to have a proper script ready and submit it. Um, and if you have it, fine. Um, as I said, it's important for us that the the project we work on uh, are, and, and the people we work we're going to work with are very open to collaborate with other people. So also to change uh, for, for that one, I said um, in, in a way. But the idea level is is okay as well, because you can work a lot on that. Um, the the open call is very simple, so it, it just requires the title, the international title, of, the original title, the international title, a very uh, brief uh, synopsis, uh, a very brief logline, uh, and and some information from from um, uh, from the team and the production company uh, attached. Uh, that's it. Because also the production company attached is important because. Uh, for requesting the funding uh, to uh, to also the sponsors, uh, there is always need uh, uh, there is the need to have a production company. So that, that's it. I hope that I answer your question. Thank you, Enrico. Are there other questions on site? More or less, how many how many participants or projects are going to be admitted? 
Um, uh, I think I said that briefly, but probably it was not clear. Uh, so it's going to be eight. Um, so in eight projects. Um, so the total would be 16, because uh, each project has a maximum of two two people attached. Um, so yeah, that's going to be eight. Uh, six of which are um, from particular regions, um, so while two are open to everybody, uh, so from everywhere in the world. Uh, of course, the six projects that are from particular regions are due to sponsorships uh, of that. Uh, but um, of course, in the open call, uh, it's 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 all detailed. I'm just going to the questions. Another question to you, Enrico. Um, but I wanted to have more insight. The question is, hello, what happens if the project doesn't get financed locally? But I wanted to we ask uh, more detail about the question. In which sense do you mean? Like, you mean um, for the participation? Or do you mean for the, for the financing? Maybe we can wait for, for the person answering. And meanwhile, um, see if there is other questions in the audience. Uh, regarding the timeline, I know you mentioned it. There's the workshop in in um, Norway. When when would that be? The other workshop is in March in Bozen. And will the the final short films be seen somewhere or shown somewhere? Um, so, yeah, the, the first workshop is going to be in Norway, uh, end of November, early December. Um, the second workshop is going to be April. I mean, like, still we don't know the dates, the precise dates. We will communicate them uh, as soon as we have it. Um, but in, let's say it's one year time from now. Uh, so here in Bozen, uh, at Zelig. Um, and uh, the... the the deadline, well, the, let's say the deadline for the expected completion of the project, as, as I said before, it should be 20, end of 2025. But also talking with all the, um, the partners, we know that uh, films might take longer. So uh, we will definitely work with each uh, one of the teams um in order to 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 have the films ready when the film is ready uh of course we we hope that it's going to be if not end of 2025 2026 and not 2029 <laughs> so uh, of course but um Birgit you want to say something okay okay um so so that's uh that that's it and where is going to be seen of course here in Bozen uh, uh, at some moment, uh, but also um, the, the, the distribution and promotion is up to also to the film. Um, that's it. Verena Ranzi, you are a local uh, producer, uh, and you ask, of course, we are looking after also local projects and all over the world. Of course, you are also invited to maybe work with filmmakers from all over the world, but of course, we are looking also after very nice local projects. So just to say this, I think it should be a bit like we see the films here at the film festival right now. So local films or uh, films made partly or totally by local people, but also uh, many other projects coming or films uh, coming from all over. Just to, to make it clear, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, no, sorry. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Actually, yeah, two 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 slots actually are f dedicated uh, to uh, films from South Tyrol. So yeah, yeah, of course. Thank you. <laughs> there is another question regarding the funding, um, and the question was for like. How is the um, how will the project then be financed regarding the production phase? Like, yeah, how will it? Not really. How can it participate? But how will it then be financed? Uh -huh. uh, so, as as we have said before, the funding is part of the program. So we we, we would like to get the the project's funding in the in the development, the production, or before the production phase, of course. So uh, we are going to help you with that. That's also why we have all the international partners aboard, on board. But of course, it's going to be tricky because funding deadlines are tricky, as you know. Uh, but this is also uh, uh, um, uh, something towards 
uh, something um, we are, we would like to work also on it ourselves because also the regional film funds who are touched in the program they are also maybe so I think or I hope that we are going to uh, harmonize also the funding guidelines by learning from each other but uh, since we have the partners on board they are all very willing to fund the projects because they are funding bodies attached but we have to look after how this works in every single region with the guidelines of every single region. Of course, there are uh, funding uh, associate or funding bodies who give the money to the project directly, like the Vienna Cultural Department, but not all of them. Terje, so you are also, we are also working with you on that, <laughs> but with all the others. But I'm, I'm um, positive and I'm um, also trust, I trust also in ourselves that we are going to be able to get also the funding within the uh, program. Um, just to add, actually, part of the training also relies on this, uh, on, on teaching the filmmakers how to um, request and apply for, for fundings. Uh, first, of course, to the sponsors, sponsors' bodies, but also to other fundings uh, that they can apply during the, the development of the short. I, I have a question and then maybe a follow-up question. So, if someone would like to apply, they have to be a, a director, a producer with an attached uh, production company, and pay an application fee of 5,000 euros. Is that right? Just to submit the project to Maso. No, thank you for that question, because this leads maybe to a misunderstanding. So that's the value of the program. The value of the program is 5,000, but we are going to help you also with this, since we have many scholarships. So in some of the regions, we have two partners, one for a scholarship for the project and a scholarship for the, fu uh, and the funding body. So we are working on that also with you. So the, please don't be shy if you don't have 5,000 euros in your pocket. <laughs> Approach us anyhow, because we will work with you on that too. Thank you. Yeah, again, regarding this, um, yeah, it's uh, every fund has a different yeah. approach to um, covering the scholarship. So some are more direct hours have through applications because every let's say institutions has different regulations so um, so yeah as Birgit said uh, just write an email and we will help you find the scholarship um, for, for that and actually yeah no submitting it totally free so <laughs> no no payment at all <laughs> during the submission phase so yeah hi I have a question uh, if I have a project with a script that I'm enough satisfied about. Does it make sense that I mm, candidate my project or not? No, it, it does, it does. Uh, as, as, as I said, uh, it's, uh, um, it, it, it's, not, it's not a requirement to have it. Uh, if you have it, it's fine. Um, I think that the, um, as I said, important, it's very important, the approach of the filmmakers coming to, uh, to, to Maso that has to be open to, uh, to, to work on that and, and, and change it in case, uh, cause, uh, uh, it, it can benefit from all the inputs that they receive from, not, not only for the tutors or, or um, but, but, but especially from the other filmmakers, because everybody will be coming from a different uh, country. Um, and so this mix of, of, of cultures and this mix of backgrounds, uh, I think it's very important to the program, especially during the five days in um, on-site workshops where uh, ideas can 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 come so if you have it you don't have to send it I mean like we, we just need uh, the, um, uh, the synopsis and log line uh, but but not not the script so but if you have it it's fine yes okay, thank you okay if there are no more questions I would like to thank you all and wrap up this morning and um, I would like, thank you so much, Birgit and Enrico, and to answer the questions. 
Um, I would like to invite you at the afternoon schedule. There will be at uh, 10 30, uh, 3 30, an uh, interactive panel and discussion on the role of short film with Enrico Vanucci and Anne Henkel Donnersmark, head of Berlinale Shorts at University, Free University of Bolzano. And at 6, there will be in this room um, shorts, lo uh, local uh, heroes shorts created by Anne Henkel Donnersmark. I would say that's it. Thank you so much for the participation. Thank you so much for your interest in Maso. You can find all information on our website. And please free, uh, feel free to talk to us if there is any questions or any misunderstandings. Please really feel free to talk to us. And um, just one other information for our guests online. If there is any um, other uh, questions or if you want to have an interview, if there is an interview re request, please feel free to send them in the chat so we can direct you to the person, uh, to the experts that are here with us. Thank you so much.